the, the Minister for Employment and Workplace Relations, Leader of the House. Mr Speaker, I move that so much of the standing and session orders be suspended, as will prevent uh, the member for Reid being compelled to move a motion of censure of the Minister for Immigration and Multicultural Affairs in order. Member for Prospect. Minister will resume his seat. Leader of the Opposition, the member for Ry Rankin, the member for Macmillan, the minister, particularly as leader of the House, is entitled to be heard in silence. He has the call. The member for Wills is warned. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I move that so much of the standing and session orders be suspended as would prevent the member for Leader of the Opposition being compelled to move a motion of censure on the Minister for Immigration in place, in place of the innuendo and imputation he is attempting to make by means of questions without notice. Mr. Member for Kingston. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Mr. Speaker I am moving this way. Uh, because the conduct of the member for Reid, supported by the Leader of the yeah, Opposition yeah, yeah. and others opposite, has demeaned this parliament. The Mr. member for Lindiari has demeaned this parliament. Mr Speaker, last night the Leader of the Opposition member for made Caldwell. a speech calling yet again for higher parliamentary standards, and today he comes into the parliament on a disgusting fishing expedition, a fishing expedition for which he has produced not a shred or a scrap of hard evidence. Now, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, members opposite are entitled to ask questions seeking factual information. They are entitled to ask questions the seeking for factual Watson. information. What they are not entitled to do is to come into this parliament and smear and, and traduce the reputation of a decent and honourable member of this parliament, a the decent and honourable minister of the Crown. Mr Speaker, what has been alleged over the last two days by the member for Reid is that the Minister for Immigration rejected representations, then, after money was paid, that he changed his view on those representations. That is a disgraceful allegation. It is an absolutely disgraceful allegation, and such an allegation should never be made without hard evidence, hard evidence of which the member for Reid has not produced a single scrap. Now, I have to say, Mr Speaker, that this kind of disgusting behaviour, this kind of travesty uh, of, of, of behaviour, this is typical of the Leader of the Opposition, a Leader of the Opposition who acts like a junkyard dog in this parliament uh, and then Mayor. pretends to be a choir boy, pretends to be a choir boy Minister, as soon as Minister he leaves resume his seat. Member for Wera will resume his seat. The member for Wera will resume his seat. Minister will withdraw that comment. Mr Speaker, I, I withdraw and I apologise, Mr Speaker. But Mr Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition the Leader of the Opposition's problem. Minister, member for where on a point of order? On the question of relevance, Mr Speaker, there's nothing in this the suspension motion that's about the Leader of the Opposition. Member for where will resume his seat. The Minister has the call by any standard. The Minister was being relevant. He had, in fact, linked these remarks between the Leader of the Opposition and the member for Reid. Not a question of whether I like it or not. I have, he has withdrawn. He has the call. Speaker, there is, there is only one reason why the member for Reid is persisting member in this for line of gutter tactics. Uh, there's only one reason why the member for Reid and members opposite are uh, floundering like rats in a sewer of their own making. Uh, there's only one reason for this, Mr Speaker. Member, member for Batman on a point of order. Mr Speaker, I find the remarks of the Leader of the House yes, most member offensive, un-Australian, I ask they be Member for Batman resume his seat. The member for Batman is aware that, undesirable though the remarks are, the requirement for withdrawal is that they are directed to an individual. The leader. Speaker, well, Mr. Speaker, well, Mr. Speaker, if it, if it would assist you and assist the House, uh, I'm, I'm happy to withdraw the comments. But the fact I is, Mr. Withdrawn. Speaker, that this leader of That's the opposition the has put the member for Reid up to this. 
This Leader of the Opposition, assisted by the management team, and what this Leader of the Opposition is on about is a grubby fishing expedition designed to traduce the reputation of the Minister. Minister, Minister resume his seat. The member for Reid on a point of order. I take the censure. Member for Reid will resume his seat. Member Reid will resume his seat. The Minister has the call. Well, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, finally it seems, finally it seems, the member for Reid uh, is prepared to move a censure motion. Well, Mr. Speaker, why didn't he come in here and do it yesterday? Why didn't he come in here and do it yesterday, rather than produce the forms of this House, rubbish the reputation of this minister, uh, bring the Parliament into disrespect by abusing all the proper standards that ought to be in place in this place, Mr. Speaker? The member, for, the member for Reid, the member for Reid, in cahoots with the leader of the opposition, has unfairly and dishonestly smeared the reputation of the minister for immigration. He shouldn't be able to get away with it. He's demonstrated nothing, and it's about time for him to put up or shut up. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the motion be agreed to? All those of that opinion say aye. Contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The member for Reid. Mr. Speaker, I move that this House censures the Minister for failing to adequately explain to the House the alleged new information that he relied upon to approve the visa application of Bedwani Habish, which he had previously rejected. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm asked by the Leader of uh, Government Business why I didn't uh, do it earlier. Well, I've only become aware overnight that he was at the function himself. Oh, oh. And uh, uh, he's uh, one of the witnesses relied upon uh, in regards to there being no previous donations. The situation is that this case has been through the normal processing system. It has been examined internally by the department uh, and uh, the allegations of uh, rape and incarceration and persecution by Syrian forces were dealt with by the department and then the RRT. And despite the attempts of the minister to indicate that the RRT might have provided a few favourable comments in regards to Mr Bedwani's case, the reality is that the federal court found him to be a particularly untrustworthy witness. And uh, what we have here is a situation where uh, the uh, member for Parramatta Made a number of uh, uh, made a number of uh, endeavours on this matter. They were clearly rejected by the minister. All of his persuasive powers and influence were unable to turn this case around. Uh, I, and uh, I, I reluctantly interrupt the member for Reid because, as the clerk has pointed out, we're not in the house is not in possession of his resolution. If you could hand the blue with the resolution. The House would be in possession of it and the debate can proceed. The member for Reid. Uh, as I Order. said, uh, the, uh, the situation was that uh, the uh, member for Parramatta was unable in any manner to persuade the minister as to the bona fides of this case. And, member, uh, minister for Citizenship. It is extremely interesting that uh, Bishop Darwish is quoted in the media today uh, as to the nature of this case. And what does he refer to? Does he refer to the matters raised by the minister uh, about uh, the, the truth of the case, which were to deal with rapes and uh, tussles between Syrians in uh, northern Lebanon and uh, issues of incarceration? The bishop, who supposedly was so persuasive of the minister, was so telling, which turned his views around. Uh, the, minister, the bishop in the, in the paper today refers to the member being a, a previous member of the South Lebanese army which is not even part of the case. It's not even a fact in the whole case. This is the man who persuaded the minister that this person should, should live in Australia, that he should become another one of the 14 to 1,500 privileged people who have been the allowed to for stay Hyde here Marsh. as permanent residents the after, for having been, Marsh. after having been rejected by the department. I warn the member for Hindmarsh. The RRT and the federal court. So the person who was so persuasive, so telling, to, to turn the minister around, far more influential allegedly than the member for Parramatta, he's out there today 
putting facts about the case which indicate he knows nothing whatsoever about the case, that the person was, not even, that the person was a member of the SLA when he wasn't. Now, the situation uh, clearly, the minister used yesterday, the minister yesterday came in here and said that he and another minister had no recollection of this fundraising function that any money changed hands. They just for fun went to Parramatta, sat around talking about the, the weather uh, and uh, basically went home. Uh, overnight, of course, uh, the member, uh, overnight the member for Parramatta has clarified to the minister that $22,000 was actually collected and we have and uh, we have uh, and we have uh, we have Mr. Uh, we have we have uh, Mr. Kizawani today out there in the media saying that leader of the opposition we had uh, Mr. Kizawani out there today confirming that 22,000 was collected for the member for Parramatta and of course trying to put forward an argument that the person uh, who was assisted uh, could not in a million years have provided any money because he allegedly had uh, five children, was poverty stricken and there's no way he could provide any money. Well, the facts of life are that the person concerned has three children, uh, is a uh, very effective, fully employed cement renderer who owns his own house uh, and uh, who, uh, uh, who owns his own house uh, and drives around in a Range Rover. So there we have the Confederates of the Minister the Confederates of the Minister attempting to basically dismerch the, 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 the credibility of those that are raising this case. Now, the situation is that large numbers of people are rejected every day of the week on the same grounds that this person now remains in Australia. Yeah. The essential grounds are that there are Syrian forces in Lebanon, uh, they, uh, uh, many Maronites and Melkites and Orthodox believers allege that they are harassed and victimised, and, uh, and these are the grounds which Mr. Ruddock's the Minister's Department, rejects every day of the week. If you look at RRT cases, they, ferret, they are very unfavourable to this type of case. That's right. the, this, this, the person that he has allowed in Australia was found by the federal court to be extremely unconvincing, a very poor witness. And when the minister comes in here today and he says, despite my rejection of the Minister of Parramatta, despite the RRT, despite the Federal Court, despite internal processing by Demia, I'm letting him stay in Australia because he had three sisters. Let's get real. If that was the basis for uh, ministerial discretion and intervention, there'd be about 4,000 a year coming in under the, under the criteria. Yeah, that's right. Uh, 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 that, that is the reality. You know, that, Basically, uh, we, we, only, we don't let people in here under normal family reunion just because they've got three sisters here. We've got a person here who's been found to have no substantial refugee humanitarian claim whatsoever, supposedly persuaded. But, 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 sorry, he is able to be uh, allowed to remain permanently because the minister allegedly found out for the first time that he had three sisters here. Now, it's interesting that the minister in yesterday's uh, uh, coverage of the issue, he recounted every single part of this person's life story. Yeah. Every single detail was there, but no mention of the, the, the sisters three, yesterday. Yeah. The three sisters didn't get a run yesterday. That's right. the, this, this, this case, which so impacted it's upon him, sisters. this letter from this bishop that so turned him around, he couldn't even remember the reasons yesterday. Uh, so uh, one has to uh, doubt how uh, substantial that factor really was. What has happened here? A few community leaders, quote, in other words, Mr. Karim Kizawani, a very close long term associate of the minister, obviously rang him up after this function and said, Philip, I want this one through to the keeper. That's the community rep that's the yes, obviously. That's the community representation that occurred here. And the donation made at the function by Mr. Kizawani on behalf of Mr. Habish is a fact of life. And, and the ministers opposite, who lead up, want us to believe, the minister, the ministers want us to believe the that they went, as of yesterday, they went the to call. this function and they re, they did not see minister any money being affairs. raised to the fundraiser. They just walked around, uh, no money received, uh, nothing happened. Uh, you know, let's get. Let, and uh, as I uh, indicated, I was attempting earlier to minister get the minister to guarantee. 
to guarantee that no money had changed hands. And quite frankly, we have procedural points and other efforts made so that the minister doesn't have to stand by his statement yesterday when he said he didn't know about money. Now, as I say, the use of ministerial discretion is a very serious matter. At various stages, some ministers have actually abolished it because they thought it was open to distortion. They thought it was open to political influence peddling. They thought it was open to ethnic kind of pleasing of communities. They thought there was a possibility of corruption there. There are ministers in the past who abolished this because they were concerned about the way it was utilised and the way it might be perceived. Now, the minister said that he has uh, allowed approximately 1,000 people into this country, over 1,000 people in this country, on the basis of a ministerial discretion which is untested, not transparent to the Australian public. No one knows why these cases are decided. Because often they are for good reason, because, for instance, the Department of Foreign Affairs' uh, papers that they put to the Immigration Department might be somewhat hostile to or favourable to a particular regime overseas, and the minister might correctly come in and say, well, I think that the uh, de facto uh, uh, position is too hardline or too softline in the case. There are other cases where there are very compelling reasons why people should remain in Australia for family reasons. Obviously, if people have a young child who is an Australian citizen, that can be a very real factor. Are we saying that a person should be uh, deported when they do have very close family here? But to say that somebody with such an atrocious case, recognised as such by the federal court as well as the RRT, should remain here simply because he has three sisters is preposterous. Mr. The minister would realise that he would reject week after week. He would reject similar cases. This is not a novel, unusual proposal. It is not, Canning? The, this man is not the first claimant in this country who has been rejected and went to ministerial discretion and was basically rejected and sent home having three, four, five, six, seven, eight siblings. That's the reality. This is nothing unusual in this case. To say that uh, all, of, all, of the, all the processing of this department, all the integrity of our immigration system, all, all of the public service effort, all the people that we appoint to tribunals, that should all be thrown out because somebody has three sisters in the country. That is preposterous and it's not the real reason why this case, why this case was uh, decided in this fashion by the minister. The reality is that uh, uh, the reality is that uh, that, that uh, a function was attended, uh, uh, donations were made. Uh, a person who was instrumental in these donations then went to the minister Member and asked the minister Robertson. asked the minister to uh, uh, to basically do him a favour in this case. Now the federal court decision totally. Uh, uh, 70 FCA 1998 absolutely demolishes the witness as a, as a credible person in any way whatsoever. What? And uh, if I can, uh, Justice O'Connor uh, went went very deeply into the uh, integrity of the person. He referred to, tri to tribunal comments. The tribunal did not accept the claim made for the first time at the tribunal. Made. For the first time, the, tr the claim made for the first time at the tribunal hearing that a cousin with a high-ranking position with the Department of State Security the renewed the applicant's passport. Furthermore, in respect of the 1996 incident, the, the crucial for reason for the refugee claim, the member, the member for Reid, the member for Cook, on Mr. Speaker, I refer to Standing Order 85. Uh, it's re regards a tedious repetition. The member for Cook will resume his seat. The member for Cook will resume his seat. The member for Reid has the call. So, <laughs> quoting, quoting further from that decision, in respect of the 1996 incident, the tribunal found implausible. Quote. Furthermore, the tribunal did not accept that the applicant was wanted by the authorities. Quote. Furthermore, the tribunal did not accept the claim made for the first time at the tribunal that a cousin with a high-ranking position, etc., etc. They're saying that this person is a totally disreputable witness. They're saying he has no refugee humanitarian case whatsoever. They're saying that he should not be allowed to come into this country in the limited number of people, approximately 12,000 a year, that we take out of 25 million refugees around the world. This person is so privileged. 12,000 get in here a year at most out of 25 million people who are out of their homes exiled from their countries, facing torture and persecution, and, and the minister comes in here and says, I am letting this person be amongst that privileged 12,000 this year because he's got three sisters in the country. 
What? This is a, this is a Member, government. Minister for Citizenship. This is a government that we experienced last year with the Tampa, demolishing people, besmirching their image. Talk about people being smeared. A government which smeared refugee claimants, yeah. said, said that they were uh, totally that they were totally fallacious. Said that they were. And, uh, Member, the minister, were the member for Reid has the call. Implying they were terrorists. That's right. This this government, which which is so vigilant supposedly, so vigilant about not having improper entry into this country, the so dedicated Fisher. to border protection, a government which is, is uh, trying to convince the Australian electorate they're credible, they're trustworthy, they believe in proper processing. That's that's the, that's the, that's the commitment they supposedly make. And I now warn we, the member for Fisher. And now we have a case here where, uh, after a function at Parramatta, where a donation is made in the presence of two ministers, on behalf of a then pending claimant, we find that he comes into this very privileged room. Shame. These are the people, as I say, they have been out there trying to undermine, uh, smear, slander refugee claimants, and then they themselves, under their own discretion, allow somebody on this basis. And uh, as the minister knows, it's non-compellable. All that the Australian Parliament and the Australian people know about these cases were how many were approved each year, how many the previous year, what proportion were accepted and rejected, etc., etc. No details of uh, what countries they stem from. No, no, no uh, ability to, to test whether there is a pattern, to test whether there is a pattern of, let's say, influence, influence peddling amongst particular ethnic communities. Not, no possibility of the Australian electorate knowing that these people who are supposed to refugees are really entering the country because there might be this person in a particular electorate who is uh, close to the party, might be able to deliver an electoral vote to them. No way the Australian electorate can examine that. And we've had a point blank refusal by the minister today to actually table the reasons for, for this grant. We had him at the last minute today. Uh, after some overnight consideration, I gather, saying that it was about these three uh, sisters. No mention yesterday. Nothing at all. He recounted every single facet of the bloke's life. You know, next thing we'll be knowing whether he had uh, ten dinos in his pocket or something. That was the kind of level of development he had yesterday. Everything had happened in the past. Everything the tribunal knew about, we heard from yesterday. And he tried to imply. Member Canning. He tried to imply this was the new evidence because the rest of Australia hasn't got the file. They might believe that what he said yesterday was the end of this, that they had all these pressing arguments. These, in fact, are the pressing arguments that were rejected by the system. He didn't come up with any new reasons yesterday, and that's why, quite rightly, the opposition has had to press him again today to try and find out the specifics of this decision. Now, uh, the uh, situation uh, is that uh, this particular community is uh, very close to the minister. He has a very strong following in it. And uh, I dare to say that uh, if one was to analyse decision making under this uh, ministerial discretion, one would find a pattern. One would find, one would find order. A, 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 order. A, a, the member for Reid has the call. Uh, you are now, as I said, uh, and uh, not only not only do, not only do I want not only do I want the minister to basically come forward and detail the whole file to see whether there's really Jim anything Garrett. more convincing than Three Sisters, but I want him to actually stand by yesterday's statement that no donations were made to the Liberal Party at that function, that no donations on were made on behalf of Mr, Mr. Habishi. That's right. uh, and it wasn't a very crowded function, so I don't think the activity got lost in the mist. Romeo's, as the Minister for Workplace Relations would know from his visit there for that night, uh, is not uh, an expand, expansive operation uh, with thousands of people present. Uh, I don't think that the minister missed that detail. That uh, uh, he uh, he and uh, he confirmed this with his colleague that uh, they weren't aware of any money uh, being raised that night. I want him to reiterate that today to, get, to, to say that no money did take was offered there. By him on his behalf. Well, you better read Hanson. Member for Reid. Member for Reid. Yeah. Minister. Member for Reed, or just you, yesterday you detailed that you confirmed with the minister that uh, you had no memory, no knowledge of money Me, being, being raised for, for the function. Now, we can hide behind technicalities. The clear facts, in conclusion, are that a person had went through the normal processing minister of this country, processing that this minister is trenchant in support of. This minister is so strong 
on repeat applications for uh, discretion, that he actually, Sorry, his office says, well, look, from now on, if a person is coming to us for a second uh, uh, consideration by the minister, we, will still seek to we can still seek to deport that person while the minister is considering it. He is so strong in guarding against abuse of, of, of secondary, second and third and fourth repeat applications for his discretion that he's actually saying, in future, because people were exploiting it before to remain in Australia for lengthy times, I'm going to actually have them deported possibly in the time when they're being considered. He's, he's, he's got a process from his 1999 uh, guidelines. From his 1999 guidelines, he says in there that a public servant will look at the less relevant, uh, unimpressive, totally fraudulent cases, not even bring them to my attention, just send off a letter to the member for Parramatta or whoever it is saying I don't even need to see that. That's how bad the case was. But the public servant didn't even show him to him, apparently. Right. And this is because the minister is saying that the system was being abused. I don't want to see second and third approaches to me. I want to use the discretion once and once only, essentially, because there is, it is being abused. And yet here today, uh, we've got a situation where uh, a, a, an approach is made and somebody is allowed into the country. Now, quite frankly, if, if people over there don't think this is serious, I think that the abuse of the immigration system through uh, uh, the refugee humanitarian uh, sector is a very serious matter. It's a thing that many members deal with daily. And if people start to believe that all you've got to do is know the right person in the right community, in the right party, at the right functions, Order. then quite frankly, it's a, it's a very sad day in immigration processing in this country. Yeah. Is the motion seconded? Thank you for Lord. Motion moved by the member for Reid is a motion of, second, uh, of censure of the Minister for Immigration, Multicultural and Indigenous Affairs. The question is that the motion be agreed to. I call the minister. Mr. Yeah, Speaker, yeah. Um, yeah. Let, me, uh, Order. let me deal with these issues in a uh, comprehensive way. Um, it, uh, it is the case that people can have different views about the way in which a particular matter might be addressed. Um, the discretion that I have to exercise is one that I take and treat with very considerable care. Um, the parliament has recognised that, uh, on a, that occasions could arise where it would be in the public interest to grant a visa even though a person did not meet normal criteria for a grant. Um, and it's for this reason that the legislation gives me the personal power to substitute where I consider it to be in the public interest for a decision with the RRT or the RMRT, a decision more favourable to the applicant. Individuals do make requests to me, many members of parliament make requests to me. And as I said earlier, um, I am free to exercise that power where I consider it to be in the public interest, irrespective of whether a person has in fact made a request. Uh, but it is also the case um, that I can decline to intervene. Um, the fact that I decline to intervene is not a decision to reject, um, and there is, no, there is no restriction on people coming back and seeking to raise matters with me. And as I indicated, uh, some 80 decisions have been made which were on second requests. I indicated five of them uh, were in response to requests made by the Honourable Member for Reid. Now, that's, that's, that's the point I made, and one by the Leader of the Opposition. Now, um, the point I do make in relation to these matters um, is that uh, I, uh, I exercise that responsibility with a great deal of care, but I'm not going to suggest that, uh, that uh, a decision that I take would be replicated in every case in exactly the same way by somebody else bringing their own mind to bear in relation to this matter. But I did spell out yesterday um, in Hansard, um, at the end of the day, uh, the basis upon which I made this decision. And I am surprised that the member for Reid um, is suggesting uh, that uh, what I said today is substantially different in any way to what I said yesterday. And um, because... The minister has the call. No. And Mr. Mr. Speaker, as I find the place, I will actually quote uh, fully to the honourable member, and it will become clear to all members when they hear it uh, that uh, in this particular in this particular case, um, I 
put the same information yesterday um, that I put today. Um, and on page uh, 1400, uh, sorry, uh, 14,804, I had this to say. The point I make is that the RRT accepted that the applicant had been detained and mistreated by the Syrians. In addition, the man had substantial Australian connections. In other words, he had a number of relatives who were permanent residents and citizens of Australia. I weighed those matters up and determined an intervention was appropriate. I disclosed to the parliament yesterday the three sisters. The three sisters. Uh, yes, I did. In other words, he had a number of relatives who were permanent residents and citizens of Australia, and I weighed those matters up and determined that an intervention was appropriate. I mean, you weren't listening. Minister, you weren't listening. Um, it was quite clear. It was quite clear. Um, and uh, uh, the fact that I didn't say that the that the relatives were three sisters. Um, I made it clear. The leader the, of the opposition. I made it. I made it clear. I made it clear uh, that he had uh, a number of relatives who were permanent residents and citizens of Australia. That was a different factor that was not known to me before, and which, coupled uh, with the concern I had about the finding of the tribunal, um, and uh, I repeated again that the. Uh, uh, that in respect of the 1993 incident, the tribunal accepted that the applicant had been detained by the Syrians and he was mistreated in Tripoli. And I might say those matters were uh, the subject of an adverse finding because they did not constitute a convention reason. Uh, there were other matters raised on that, uh, uh, on, on that matter um, in which the tribunal did not make positive findings. Um, but uh, that in no way derogates uh, from the fact uh, that, unlike most cases I see <laughs> where the, uh, the tribunal says uh, that I do not believe the individual, he has no credibility, and I do not accept any of the claims that he has made, there was a specific finding, a very specific finding, in respect of the 1993 incident that the tribunal accepted. Um, and it was on that basis. That, uh, that I elected in this particular case to intervene. Now, uh, there were only two other points of substance uh, raised by the, uh, uh, by the uh, or three other points of substance raised by the member for Reid, which I, uh, I see fit to deal with. Um, the first is in relation to Bishop Darwish's comments in the uh, Sydney Morning Herald, I think it was, or one of the newspapers. Well, it was the Sydney Morning Herald. Um, what I know is that. Uh, uh, that uh, the newspapers yesterday had uh, the member for Reid uh, issuing a press release uh, which contained a background information sheet on ministerial discretion under section 417. And, uh, uh, besides the fact that the, uh, that the uh, member uh, evidences some abysmal uh, knowledge about what actually happened, um, what he was putting into the minds of the journalists was that in some way decisions taken by me under 417 were related to um, the South Lebanese Army. In fact, paragraph three, he says, there was public concern when the minister used 417 to allow into Australia 200 Lebanese people either associated with members uh, with or members of the Israeli-backed South Lebanese Army, and some of those members had tortured and murdered Palestinians and so on. Now, um, now let me just say, uh, 417 was never used for that purpose. Um, they were allowed under the special humanitarian program, and they had to meet character, um, and, it, and it meant that amongst a large number of people who in fact applied, a very significant proportion were unable uh, to access those visas under the special humanitarian program. But I wouldn't be surprised if Bishop Darwish was rung up um, by a journalist and said, uh, was this man in some way linked with forces in Lebanon? And then, and then the journalist verbals him and says, oh, that's the South Lebanese army. That wouldn't surprise me. That wouldn't surprise me. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I, I certainly have, I, cert, I, cert, I certainly know the difference between the South Lebanese army and, and the uh, Lebanese forces who were a, uh, a Christian militia in Lebanon. Um, the fact is that they were quite different. They fought in very different theatres um, and they are quite distinctive. Um, and, uh, and I suspect 
um, that it was more likely um, uh, a journalist not dealing with those issues fully, particularly when the argument had been advanced that this issue in some way had some relationship to the South Lebanese army by the member for Reid, who was hawking this around the press gallery yesterday. Now, let me just uh, deal with the other imputation um, that the member raised about the nature of my decision making. I did actually have the department take out uh, advice for me uh, on my recent decision making in relation, to, uh, in relation to intervention requests under section 345, 351 and 417 from July 2000 until December 2002. Um, and uh, the largest number of interventions were on behalf of Fijians. 123. Um, Lebanese were next at 105, Indonesians at 72, Sri Lanka at 65 and the Philippines at 65. Now, what you, what you have to look at in relation to that decision-making um, is that uh, uh, the decisions I take are based upon case-by-case -case determination. Um, the numbers will obviously vary from time to time, Member for Brisbane. Um, and uh, you do have uh, areas in which, Mr. Speaker, um, uh, you do have areas, Mr. Speaker, where uh, interventions are more likely um, because of the extent to which uh, people have entered Australia from particular cohorts and overstayed those visas, and over a period of time entered into relationships um, which are likely to prompt a, uh, an intervention request. Uh, finally, let me just say I don't know whether the Labor Party has a fundraising code. Um, but our party does. And uh, the fact is that under that fundraising code, members of parliament are Member at arm's length from the Member process. Reed. And I remain at arm's length from that process. I always have. I don't make inquiries in relation to, uh, in relation to donations. I don't make inquiries in relation to uh, outcomes. Um, occasionally, I, I might I might see people paying to go into a function. Uh, I may see a raffle. Um, uh, you know uh, that, that can happen. Um, but, but, but let me say uh, what I said yesterday in relation to this matter, because I don't resile from it at all. Um, I said uh, um, I have no knowledge. I do not remember every case that has been raised with me. I think it would be unreasonable to expect that I would, in fact. Uh, uh, that, that I would, in view of the fact that you are asserting that it is probably more than a thousand, I will look at the background to it, and I will assess what the situation finally was. Uh, or, or situation was. Finally, let me say that I attend many functions in which people pay to enter, and where people are involved in fundraising activities. I have no knowledge of the nature of those fundraising activities. I never seek to inquire. I certainly have no knowledge of the sorts of claims that are being made by the honourable member. That situation remains, um, and uh, it was the situation that it was the answer I gave yesterday. It was a full and complete answer about the, the state of my knowledge. Yeah. Question is that the motion be agreed to. The question is that the motion be agreed to. The Honourable Member for Lawler. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And can I say this issue goes to the heart of the moral legitimacy, or should I say illegitimacy, of the Howard government. The coalition turned the last election campaign into a referendum on who could best maintain the integrity of our immigration system. They won that election after polluting public opinion with what was nothing short of deliberately manufactured lies, and Minister Ruddock knows that from children yeah. overboard. They denigrated and vilified genuine refugees to manipulate public opinion. And now we learn, now we learn, after that election, after children overboard, after CIVEX, that what they've done is they've turned the integrity of our immigration system into their own political and financial plaything. They certainly decide who comes into this country and the circumstances in which they come. They certainly decide that and it's got a dollar sign attached to it. That's what we know from these events. And I'm going to take you through these events in a way in which Minister Ruddick didn't in that incredibly pathetic defence to what are serious allegations. Let's just go through this, Minister. Let's just go through it 
very carefully. Here's a bloke. Here's a bloke who makes a protection visa application on the 1st of July 1996. He gets knocked back by the department on the 10th of March 1997. He gets knocked back by the Refugee Review Tribunal on the 2nd of April 1997. He gets knocked back by the federal court in June 1998. An interested Liberal member of parliament, presumably held in some esteem because he's a parliamentary secretary, writes twice writes twice and it gets knocked back both Nothing times. And what's Minister Ruddock's case here? Minister Ruddock's case is, oh, two things changed my mind. One was a bishop. Well, I still, I still want to know, Minister, and you didn't answer this, you didn't answer this and you didn't make it clear in question time, and the only thing that would make it clear is tabling the file is when you were first approached by that bishop. Your answer today, your answer today was, 24th of September, and then he wrote on the 27th. But I talk to that bishop all the time. Well, the way of absolutely proving you've had your go, no, Minister, and you Lawler, didn't answer no, this allegation. For yeah. the way of member for Lawler, I have allowed a large number of views, but it is appropriate to address your remarks to the chair. All right, uh, Minister, Minister Ruddy. Uh, no, member, member for Lawler, will resume his seat. No, 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 but. but uh, Member for Prospect, just 30 seconds, or even three. The member for Prospect. Point of order, then. You have allowed the minister in this parliament continually to use the word you, and yet you interrupt the speakers on our side for doing seat. the same thing. The member for Prospect will resume her seat. That is an outrageous suggestion. I will, in fact, personally run through the Hansard with a yellow pen, indicating the number of times in which I draw the minister's attention to the matter while he was speaking. And I've done the same thing to the member for Lawler. The member for Lawler. The thing that would have answered that allegation about when the, the bishop boot. first intervened in this matter would have been tabling the file. Yeah. The only answer that's been given to that is to protect the privacy of this protection visa applicant. Well, we've already got on the Hansard the person's name and the Dimia file number. What more is there to protect? But, Minister Ruddock, if you want to give us that file with the name scrubbed out wherever it appears, we'll take that file, Minister Ruddock, and we'll be looking for when the bishop first contacted you. Yeah. But let's assume, let's assume that the version the Minister's put is the correct version. Since when did a bishop matter? As the Shadow Minister for Immigration, my office is littered, littered with correspondence from bishops, from priests, from nuns, from rabbis, all of which doesn't make a difference in 417 matters. I've just said to the staff, go and grab the first three, and they've come back with these. We've got. I'll, I'll see your bishop and raise you an archbishop. We've got an. <laughs> we've got an arch. we got an archbishop in Adelaide who's personally intervened on behalf of an Iranian detainee in uh, the Baxter Detention Centre. I think he is. He's certainly detained. 417 of the Act, and Minister Ruddick doesn't go, oh dear me, an archbishop. I better just go the tick here because that's what I always do when I see a bishop making an, an application. He says. Uh, how, you know, writes back and says, uh, your request for the exercise of my power was referred to me. However, I've decided not to consider exercising my power under section 417 of the Act. So, so somehow a bishop was the difference in this case, and an archbishop here doesn't make any difference. And then, of course, as honourable members on this side know, there's the East Timorese. There's more yeah, bishops yeah. over the East Timorese matter than there is on the chessboard. I mean, it is completely absurd to say that if you respond to the interventions of church figures, that you wouldn't have already made a positive indication in relation to the East Timorese when every Catholic bishop in Australia, and I note that Minister Rabbit is nodding his head here, he probably knows a little bit about the Catholic Church, every Catholic <laughs> bishop in Australia has made representations on behalf of the East Timorese. Well, you know, that, 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 that hasn't. Oh, well. Well, I tell, tell you something we've guaranteed through this debate. I reckon we've got 1,650 East Timorese visas. We've guaranteed that. Because you'd look fools if you didn't do that now. You'd look fools if you didn't do that. So we've obviously guaranteed that. We've already guaranteed Minister. that. Then Minister. All, oh, oh, Minister. Oh, oh. Minister. 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 Minister.
then, then on the intervention of church figures, we've got the Coalition for the Protection of Asylum Seekers who actually say no deportations. Bishop George Browning, uh, the spokesperson for the Federation of Islamic Councils. We've got a nun, Sister Aileen Crow. We've got a, another uh, uniting church Sister figure, Frances Milnes, of course, Sister Janet Mead. I've forgotten her. She advocates for asylum seekers. We've got a rabbi. None of them, of course, have had positive results when they've made interventions. So since when, Minister, has the intervention of a bishop been the difference? Since when has it been the difference? I reckon if we actually could get some public transparency on your non-reviewable, non-compellable discretion, we would actually find that a church figure intervenes in most of them, and that isn't the difference between you saying yes or you saying no. So I'm going, to, I'm going to go through all the correspondence in my office with these church figures, and I'm going to write back to them with the suggestion that next time, instead of sending a letter, they ought to go to a Liberal Party fundraiser because it has better results. Presumably, presumably we'd get a discount for the East Timor ease in bulk, so if we get together two or three hundred thousand dollars, we should be right, because that was the difference in this case, not the intervention of the bishop. Then the other thing that the minister says is the difference is having Australian family and then contends that somehow this only came to his attention on the third 417 matter. Not the first one, not the second no, one, I but the know. third one. Well, the Federal Court didn't know. Well, if that version is right, Minister Ruddick, if that version is right, the member for Parramatta is the most incompetent, the most incompetent member the House of Representatives yeah, has ever yeah. seen. Because, because who, who would put together a letter? Who would go to the Minister for Immigration twice, so interested that he goes twice, without having interviewed the people involved and marshalled every fact in their favour, including Australian family. Yeah. And I know that members here, because they represent very multicultural electorates, I know that many of them do write to you and do seek to see you about these sorts of matters, and when they do, they make sure that they've got every fact. But, Minister Ruddock, if the member for Parramatta is that incompetent, you can prove that today Mem once again Lawler. by tabling the file. Once again, by tabling the file. And if you table that file and the, minister, and the member for Parramatta couldn't be bothered putting in the details of people's family circumstances, and Dimia never worked it out, and the RRT never worked it out, and the federal court never worked it out, and the lawyers acting for this bloke never worked it out and never used it as a fact, if that is what you are actually saying, Remember Minister Ruddock, which would be extraordinary, truly extraordinary, then prove it by the production of the file. Yeah. The fact that you haven't put the file before this parliament can only inexorably lead to the conclusion that the file doesn't support the case that the bishop was the difference, a contention that really we know from other files is clearly absurd, doesn't support the case that you only came to knew about the family by the third time that you were looking at this matter. It must support the case that you knew about these things earlier. And can I just make an additional point on this? If the ministers on the question of competency, because you know the minister, there's an old saying in, in Australia, the money or the box. Well, I think this motion should be the money or the incompetence. Because if the minister is truly saying it took until the four, third 417 for him to become apprised of the basic facts of this matter, then what he is saying to the Australian community is he weighs in his hands matters that could go to life and death because that's what can happen if people are returned in bad circumstances overseas. He weighs in his hands matters going to life and death without having taken the opportunity to inform himself of the simplest facts that relate to them. So if that is really your case, the money or the Hand incompetence, the I, my, I, I'm still barracking for the money, but the only, alternate, <laughs> the only alternate case is gross incompetence, incompetence by the member for Parramatta and by you, because why would you be dealing with a matter as serious as whether a person who has claimed persecution can stay in this country without having got every fact, every fact before you and having weighed it. So you, you stand condemned either way and this censure should be carried either way. But as I say, I am still barracking for the money. Why am I still barracking for the money? Because we know there was a fundraiser. That hasn't been denied. 
We know Minister Ruddick was at the fundraiser. That hasn't been denied. Uh, he's clearly conferred with a ministerial colleague about the fundraiser. We suspect that to be Minister Abbott. So Minister Abbott was there. Uh, we understand that uh, uh, there were other members of parliament there, or at least one other member of parliament there. We know $22,000 was raised. Uh, now, Mr Speaker, I presume you're above fundraising because of uh, the high office you hold. Uh, but for those of us who engage in fundraising, we know $22,000 isn't a bad haul on a night for a fundraiser <laughs> at a Lebanese restaurant called Romeo's. Uh, I'll, I'll have a quiz night in my electorate tomorrow night. And let me tell you, I'll be lucky to walk away with $2,200, not $22,000. That's the way that political party fundraising goes when you've got a dinner here and a plate of dips there and a raffle to follow. We, we all know that's how it goes. $22,000 raised at a night at Romeo's restaurants. That's not denied. That's not denied. And also, what isn't denied or guaranteed at no point has the minister actually come in here and said, I guarantee that no money was do donated to the Liberal Party on behalf of this protection visa applicant. That's I right. guarantee that. Well, you, you guarantee the Leader of the Opposition. Well, why not? Uh, Member for Lawler will address her remarks through the chair. Uh, rhetorically, Painful as it may be, you should be having eye contact with the chair, Stop not with the oh. minister. <laughs> 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 uh, Member for Lawler. It, it'll be my pleasure, Mr Speaker. It'll be my pleasure. Right. Can I say to you rhetorically, Mr Speaker, if, if, the, if, the, case, if the case was that no money had been donated to the Liberal Party on behalf of this protection visa applicant, then you would expect a minister subject to a censure motion to walk in and say that. I mean, after all, we've got this censure motion because the government actually thought it was all a good idea at the time. Well, if it was all a good idea at the time, I know what I would have wanted if I was Minister for Immigration. I would have wanted a file that I could table that completely exculpated me from every allegation made. And I would have been able to want to, would have wanted to walk into here and say, I guarantee 100 per cent no money was donated on behalf of this visa applicant to the Liberal Party. That hasn't happened. And the minister, of course, your the minister, of course, overnight. It, 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 I don't know who's uh, responding next for the government, but perhaps the person responding next for the government uh, can, actu can actually give that guarantee. He might have been at the dinner. The, these allegations were raised in this place yesterday, properly, properly, and I resent any implication that they weren't raised properly, because we are entitled, as the opposition in this country, to be assured that the visa allocation system is working properly. Yeah, yeah. We are actually concerned about the integrity of the migration system. We are actually concerned about queue jumping on this side of the House. So on that basis, we raised matters properly going to the integrity of the visa allocation system and queue jumping yesterday. They were related to a Liberal Party fundraiser. The minister involved and the member involved, whose fundraiser it was, have had overnight to confer. If you were able to 100 per cent rule out the making of a donation, well, rhetorically, Mr Speaker, I ask you, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? And it hasn't been done. Yeah, yeah. Can I conclude by saying this? We've got a man who, on the third occasion in front of the minister, gets a visa. We know that there was a donation made in between. The two, two, uh, Kate, two uh, issues advanced by the minister don't stack up on a proper examination, and there's been no objective backing of them by tabling the file. Well, if you want to answer this allegation, get the file out and make the guarantee. Otherwise, we are entitled to conclude, and people listening to this debate are entitled to conclude, that there is something here that, Minister, that, something here that smells and should worry them greatly Minister, about the integrity of Australia's migration system. This is the political Minister, party that says we decide to, who comes to this country in the circumstances in which they come. What's the price? Order. Yeah. Order. The question is that the motion be agreed to. The Leader of the House, Minister for Employment and uh, Workplace Mr. Relations. Speaker, Mr Speaker, the member for, the member, the member for Lawler has said, uh, she has said that uh, uh, the gentleman in question, or someone on his behalf, uh, went to a fundraiser, made a $3,000 donation and said, this donation is on behalf of the gentleman in question and he expects a visa. I guarantee that that did not happen. Oh, wow. 
I guarantee that that did not happen. Nothing like that ever happens. Nothing like that ever happens at Liberal Party fundraisers, and nothing like that should ever happen at any political party fundraiser. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I can understand. I can understand uh, why the member for Reid did not move this censure motion yesterday. I can understand why the member for Reid. Uh, was unwilling to move this censure motion today uh, until forced to by the House because, Mr Speaker, the member for Reid is incapable of moving a censure motion. He's incapable of moving a censure motion because he has no evidence, no evidence whatsoever upon which a censure motion should be based. Mr Speaker, I suppose the first point that the member for Reid made uh, was that the gentleman in question uh, should never have been let in. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, he must be the only person who's ever applied to come to Australia who members opposite don't think should have been let in. Mr Speaker, the members opposite are the people uh, who believe that anyone who gets here should be able to stay here. They're the people who want to see an open door immigration policy being run by Australia. But Mr Speaker, the other point that the, the member for Wairua tried to make tried to make that member you can't have a fundraiser uh, without uh, cash changing hands and ministers watching. That's the, that's the claim uh, that, 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 that members opposite are making, that there is no such thing as a party political fundraiser without scads and scads of cash changing hands, probably not even in brown paper envelopes, and ministers watch all this. And ministers are advised the of exactly for what Swan each is bit of warned. cash is for. Well, that is an utterly absurd allegation. It is a contemptible allegation, and it should never be made, never be made without without evidence. Now, Mr. Speaker, um, the next uh, the next claim that is uh, that is clear in the member for Reid's censure motion is that no one ever comes to a fundraiser without seeking corrupt favours. Well, again. This is smearing every single person who has ever been to a party political fundraiser. This idea that it's impossible to go to a fundraiser without seeking a corrupt favour is simply wrong, simply and utterly false, Mr Speaker. And it demeans this I warn the member and it for demeans Reagan. the member for Reid and, most of all, it demeans the Leader of the Opposition that he should have been party to this pathetic effort. Now, Mr Speaker, Mr. Speaker uh, members opposite I have the member for Wairua for the have, third time. Have speculated. Um, Mr. I, I have already interrupted the member for Wairua for his interruption. Member for Macmillan is warned. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the has the Mr. Call. Speaker, members opposite have speculated uh, that I may have been the other minister at the fundraiser in question. Mr. Speaker, to put them out of their agony, uh, to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to let them to put their minds at ease, I am prepared to say, Mr. Speaker, yes. I was at the fundraiser in question. The fundraiser in question uh, took place uh, sometime uh, not, too, not too long before the last election. Uh, it took place at Romeo's restaurant. Uh, there was about 50 or 60 people there, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I don't know whether the gentleman in question was there. Uh, and I don't know whether the gentleman who is alleged to be the friend I of the gentleman the for in Watson. question was there. Mr. Speaker, I don't know and the member uh, who made uh, donations. Uh, I don't know uh, whether particular raffles were raised. I don't know whether particular auctions might have taken place. I don't know, and the Minister for Immigration wouldn't know either. I didn't know how much money was raised uh, until I read about it in the newspaper, and the member and, and the Minister for Immigration likewise wouldn't know how much money was raised uh, until uh, he read about it in the newspaper. Mr Speaker, the truth is, as you would know, that Liberal members of parliament are governed by a strict uh, code of conduct, and amongst many other things, the code of conduct says uh, that members of parliament uh, should, should, not, should not solicit uh, donations and should not handle donations. It's a very good code of conduct. And I would commend it to members opposite. I would commend it to members opposite, and I would suggest to members opposite that they should not think that ministers in this government and members of parliament in this coalition act by the same sort of standards, which are obviously only too common, only too common 
in the Labor Party, a Labor Party which is regularly asking people to spend $1,500 or more uh, to come to dinners, to come to dinners, so that they might get to know ministers, Mr. Speaker. This is an absurd, an absurd suggestion that members opposite are trying to make. Now, Mr. Speaker, let's again review uh, what the member for Reid uh, has been has been saying. Well, uh, he's been saying he's been saying uh, that the gentleman in question, uh, the visa applicant, uh, was at the fundraiser in question. Uh, well, he's presented no evidence. No evidence whatsoever. Uh, he has said that a donation was made uh, by this gentleman or by someone on behalf of this gentleman. No evidence has been presented. Uh, no evidence whatsoever. I mean, is there a stat deck anywhere? Is there a stat deck of someone else? Uh, uh, is uh, uh, there, a, there a report anywhere about this? There is no evidence whatsoever. It is just a disgusting a disgusting and dirty, grubby fishing expedition by a, the member for Reid, who should know better. And then finally, and then finally, and then finally, the member for Reid has alleged that a corrupt decision was made. Well, again, Mr. Speaker, not one shred, not one scary, not one scrap of evidence has been produced to justify this grubby, dirty, unworthy, disgusting smear on a good minister. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, let's consider, let's consider uh, the, the censure motion, the censure motion uh, that the member for Reid put before the House. This House, he said, censures the minister for failing to adequately explain to the House the alleged new information that he relied upon to approve the visa application. That is that is almost embarrassingly weak, Mr. Speaker. He has no evidence that the gentleman in question was there. Uh, he has no evidence that the friend of the gentleman in question was there. He has no evidence that a donation was made. He has no evidence that conditions were placed on a donation because uh, no such donation would ever be accepted. And he has no evidence that a corrupt decision was made. So he's reduced to coming into this House and censuring the minister uh, because he's failed to adequately explain himself. Mr Speaker, this is one of the worst and the weakest censure motions that has been moved in this House for a very long time. The member for Reid has fallen into the, fallen into the trap uh, that we laid for him, Mr Speaker, because we on this side knew that there was nothing whatsoever to justify the outrageous smears and the imputations that the member for Reid, egg egged on by the Leader of the Opposition, uh, was making. Uh, Mr Speaker, what in the end is the crime uh, of the Minister for Immigration? Uh, the first crime uh, is that he listens to representations. Well, why shouldn't the Minister for Immigration listen to representations? He's a member of parliament. Why shouldn't he listen uh, to other members of parliament? And let's face it, he gets representations. In this case, he had representations by, amongst other people, the member for Kingsford Smith. Why shouldn't he have listened to those representations? And why shouldn't he have listened to the representations finally made uh, by the bishop in question? The other crime of the Minister for Immigration is that he is close uh, to a community. Well, Mr Speaker, he is the Minister for Immigration. He is the Minister for Multicultural and Ethnic Affairs. Why shouldn't he be close to a community? In fact, it would be a tragedy uh, if a Minister of the Crown in this country was not able to get close uh, to important communities. Now, Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, there has been nothing whatsoever done wrong by this minister. More importantly, there has been nothing whatsoever demonstrated by members opposite that this minister has done anything wrong. Now, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, um, I will, uh, I will, I will say to the House, uh, there has uh, at times been corruption uh, in the administration of the immigration system, and a colleague of members opposite is now in jail. Is now in jail uh, because of that, Mr. Speaker. The former member for Caldwell is now in jail uh, because, because of things that, minister, that, that happened but minister, shouldn't happen. Minister, Mr Speaker, the whole point, member for where the whole are. point, the whole minister point— has raised an issue that the clerk is reminded me subject to appeal I'm, and therefore I'm, ought not to have been raised. OK. I, 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 cert I, I certainly— the member for, I certainly, I member certainly for Batman went on assisting the debate 
in the sense of the flow of the debate, promptly frustrates the role of the chair. Mem the minister has the call I, to be heard I in silence. I certainly would not, I certainly would not wish, Mr. Speaker, uh, to say anything that trespassed on any of the standing orders. But so, Mr. Speaker, I, I will not continue down that path. But, Mr. Speaker, the fact is, the fact is, Mr. Speaker, that this minister when he came into office was determined to clean up the administration of the immigration system and that is precisely what he has done i know the minister members of this house know the minister and any members of this house who have dealt with the minister would accept should accept if they're prepared to give credit where it's due that this minister has been probably the most outstanding minister for immigration of recent times uh, mr speaker mr speaker as the Minister for Immigration has made abundantly clear, uh, he acted because new representations were made, uh, new evidence and new information was provided. Well, why shouldn't he do precisely what he did on the basis of precisely what has happened in this case? Uh, the position of members opposite appears to be that just because some uh, representations are refused, all representations are refused, and if some representations uh, are refused, any representation that isn't refused is somehow corrupt. It is a pathetic and a hopeless I allegation. The for it's well. completely unworthy of members opposite, and it's certainly it's completely unworthy of a leader of the opposition who's pledged to raise standards. Mr. Speaker, it is clear that this is a grubby fishing expedition. Uh, it is clear. Uh, it is clear, Mr. Speaker, uh, that they have no evidence. Uh, in the end, in the end, all they could say was that, well, uh, the Minister for Immigration should have known about something uh, before he finally did know, again, know about something. But, Mr. Speaker, it's not the Minister for Immigration's fault uh, if people uh, who are making representations on behalf of someone uh, don't initially or even subsequently produce all the evidence that they might be able to to justify that case. When they finally did produce the evidence, the minister acted uh, as Lawler. he should. Then uh, the, uh, the member for Lawler suggested uh, that uh, un unless, unless uh, uh, the Minister for Immigration uh, was prepared to produce the file, uh, that would prove that there was a confidential file a confidential file dealing with people's lives, uh, that there would be somehow proof of corruption. Well, the suggestion uh, that every decision that is not justified by the production to a feral opposition of the complete file is just absolutely, utterly and completely absurd. Mr Speaker, Mr. Speaker it's pretty clear that what we have seen over the last couple of days is an exercise in mudslinging, a sad and unworthy exercise in mudslinging uh, designed uh, to prop up the failing leadership uh, of the Leader of the Opposition. Uh, this is his muscle-up strategy, Mr Speaker. Uh, he tried the member for Lilly. Uh, the member for Lilly, uh, a man of some honour, uh, had some standards that he wouldn't transgress, so he said, OK, OK, let's bring in the member for Werriwa. Let's have a muscle-up strategy, and that's exactly what we've seen. Uh, the words might be the member for Reeds, uh, the words might be the leader of the oppositions, but the ideas and the grubby gutter tactics are nothing but the member for Werriwa's, uh, a man who just can't not wait to pull his knife out of the seat of the and shove it in the Werewa, back of the leader of the opposition. The Mr Speaker, an unworthy Speaker. motion from an unworthy opposition. This is an opposition that knows, doesn't know where it stands, doesn't know where it stands, doesn't know what it believes in. Uh, it's now wracked uh, by a fight to the death between two proven, proven failures. And Mr. Speaker, I move as an amendment that all words after that be omitted, with a view to substituting the following words: the House censures the member for Reid for attempting unsuccessfully to conduct a campaign of innuendo, imputation and smear against the Minister for Immigration and failing to substantiate his claims when compelled to do so by the House. I commend that amendment to the House. The question now is: there was a question of. Member for Batman on a point I of think order. I, I, on a point of order, Mr. Speaker, 
I thought I heard you requesting that the minister withdraw some unsavoury and uncomplimentary un-Australian remarks. The, the, Is the that true, Mr The Speaker? member for Batman will resume his seat. The member for Batman. Order. Mem minister. <laughs> The member for Batman is right that there were words. The member for Batman is right that there were words uttered that I felt um, were inappropriate. I didn't require their withdrawal. I drew the minister's attention to the fact that the motion of censure, which does allow a little more latitude than normal, was a motion of censure of the minister for immigration, not a motion of censure of either the member for Werra or the member for Lilly, which seemed to me to be reasonably addressing what was an inappropriate remark on his part. The question is, uh, the original question was that the motion be agreed to this. The Honourable the Leader of the House has moved as an amendment that all words after that be omitted with a view to substituting other words. The question now is that the words be omitted stand part of the question. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. Contrary, no. no. I think the noes have it. Is Clark has just suggested that for the convenience of the House, I might I should restate what I've just said. The original question was that the motion be agreed to. To this, the Leader of the House has moved as an amendment that all words after that be omitted with a view to substituting other words. The question now is that the words proposed to be omitted stand part of the question. All those of that opinion say aye. The contrary, no. I just confer the clerk. I think the noes have it. Is a division required? Ring the bells. Standing order still applied during a division. Treasurer, Leader of the Opposition.
Bundesliga. Lock the doors. The question is that the words proposed to be omitted stand part of the question. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair and the noes to the left. I appoint the honourable members for Karangamite and Mallee tell us for the noes and the honourable members for Franklin and Melbourne Ports tell us for the ayes. Order. The result of the division is I 61, no 78. The question is therefore negative. The question now is that the words proposed to be substituted be so substituted. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Aye. I think the ayes have it. Aye. Is a division required? 
Ring the bells for one minute. Members would please quickly take their seats. <clears throat> Lock the doors. The question is that the words proposed to be substituted be so substituted. The eyes will pass to the right of the chair and the nose to the left. I appoint the honourable members for Karangamite and Mally Tellers for the eyes, the honourable members for Franklin and Melbourne Ports Tellers for the nose. The provision is I 78, no 62. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The question now is that the motion as amended be agreed to. All those that opinion say aye. aye. Contrary, no. no. I think the ayes have it. Is the division required? Ring the bells for one minute. I just remind anyone leaving the chamber they should report to the tellers. Lock the doors.
question is that the words proposed to be omitted stand part of the question. This is a one-minute division. Point the same tellers as in the previous division. Order. The result of the division is ayes 78, noes 89. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The Prime Minister. Ask for further questions to be placed on the notice paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah.